The following is a presentation of Muddy River News. TI Trust stands for True Integrity. One of our core values that we had for our staff was integrity. We want to be seen as, as a very integrity-driven company. We've been doing trust services as an organization since the 1950s. It's all based on what's in the best interest of the clients. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's about serving that client and, and getting to a result that, that they need. Welcome to another edition of Muddy Rivers Business Spotlight. I'm Ron Kincher. We have Suzanne Ellerbrock from Golden Bridges with us. And of course, this is brought to you by TI Trust. So, Suzanne, welcome. Good Thanks morning. for joining us. Thank you. So the first question is, what is Golden Bridges? Oh, wow. That's a really tough one to answer. I know, but let's get, we'll get us started. <laughs> All right. So our purpose is to assist individuals with downsizing, organizing, and relocating. That's it in a nutshell. But there's so many different facets of it that we can do. The main thing is we got in the business to help people, specifically seniors, but over the last 10 years, we've grown to help all ages. That's so, what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So you do, okay, so go ahead. So anyway, we do all ages. So if you are an individual such as yourself that has to move and you don't want to do it because you're busy at work, you can call us and we can handle it for you. We manage the move. We don't physically do the moving, right. but we get everything ready to do the move. So it, you don't necessarily deal with people that are disabled or have Alzheimer's or anything along, along those lines. It's just people who need assistance in moving. No, because those individuals might need help too. So well, I understand that, but right. that's, that's not your sole purpose. That is, is not disabled. the sole okay. purpose. Right. That is not. But we've helped a couple, whether it's been hearing impaired, vision impaired, or physically unable to do the move. And let's face it, sometimes no matter what our age, we are physically unable to do the move. Yeah. Um, how, did, how did this all get started? Oh, that's a great question. So about 12, no, about 11 years ago, the Chamber of Commerce held their first business plan competition. Mm -hmm. And we were tossing around the idea of do we start a business or do we not? And basically, we found Senior Move Management. It is a nationwide industry. It has been around for 30 years now. Wow. I know, it's crazy. And we said, hey, we can do this. Quincy needs it, we're an aging population and we're gonna to continue to age. So we literally talked it over, went out to drinks and said, it's now or never. And right. so we entered the business plan competition and that year we were the first winners of $10,000. Wow, and that's cool. what kicked us off. So had any of you had a background in care for the elderly or had someone in your family that had lived through this experience? Well, we each have parents that were experiencing some stage of it, whether mm -hmm. it was in the process of moving out of their main home into and you know mother-in-law quarters, whether it was moving into a nursing home and then dad had to stay in the house by himself. So we had personal experience, but then our background has been in healthcare, has been in um, actually phys physical education, not for profit. So. It runs the gamut as to mm -hmm. where our background is. So you've been around about 10 years then? We have, celebrating April 1st wow. of 2023. That's cool. So, um, and how many of there are you? So there are three owners, myself, Suzanne Ellerbrock. I have Nancy Waters and Susan Schultz. Right. They're the other two partners. So is there employees underneath that or do you outsource the services that you provide? Great. We have 15 employees oh, that really? work for us. Yes. But they're what we call episodic. So they work when we have jobs. So you okay. always want to give us a call because our team always wants to be out there helping people. So if I have somebody that's moving, um, do you provide like a consultative type thing where I call you guys, you guys come in and talk to me about what I'm going through or what my mom's going through, or you know, it could be anybody, it, it sounds like. So is that how it starts? It does, it starts? starts with the initial phone call. Okay. And that, our toll free number, by the way, is 888-922-6368. Okay. So during that call, we kind of get a feel for what your needs are. And then we schedule that free consultation where we actually come out and see the home Okay. and talk with the individual about what their goal is, whether they need to just stay in their home and get organized, whether they need to think about moving to assisted living or even an independent living community, or if the family member is deceased and the kids need help cleaning out the okay. house. Yeah. So we can do any of that and it's always a free consultation. From there, we'll give you a price. People say, you know, what's your hourly rate and how much is this gonna cost? We can't tell you that until we actually see the home because we base it on a project price. Yeah, that that's interesting because everything's got to be different it is. in terms of what you're providing for that client. And like you said, each 
house has different square footage. It does. So our cheapest or our least expensive job was $250. That was organizing a closet. Now, <laughs> hold on. Yes. The most expensive job was $28,000. Okay. And I know that shocks a lot of people, but quite honestly, it was the home of a hoarder. And we had to go through everything in that home and decide, is it something that needs to be disposed of? Can it be donated? Do we need to bring in an auctioneer? Does the family member want it? So you think $28,000, it's a lot of labor. Right. A lot so, of labor. So in that case, uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying about the dollar amount, but hoarders, right. you know, I lived through that a little bit. Um, how do you make the determination of what stays, what goes? I mean, is there a family member with you in the house at that time, or you just make a list, stack it? So if the member is deceased, we mm -hmm. work with the family, asking them, what is it that you want out of the home? Specifically, is it the family Bible? Is it all photos? Are you looking for the will? Are you looking for any bank documents? And our team looks for those items and gathers them for the family. Then if they want some jewelry, mm -hmm. you know, mom had the precious wedding ring, or she had a bracelet, whatever it might be, our team is always on the lookout for that. So we get the direction from the family member. If the individual is still living, they are the ones making the decision. Yes. If they're capable of making yes, the if decision, capable I would assume. Making, yeah. And most of our clients are. Yep. Most of our clients are. So they're letting us know what they want to keep, what they want to donate, if the auctioneer needs to come in, or what they would like their children to have. And that's part of the toughest conversation that we have yeah. because sometimes our kids are, okay, let's say they're my age, I'm an adult child, and I have my own home. I have my own decorations, I have my own furniture, and I might not want what mom wants to give me. So we try to have that conversation with the client to say, you know, your child might not want this, who else could use it? Maybe it's a niece, a nephew, a grandchild, a great grandchild, or quite honestly, maybe it's you as the child saying, you know what, that coffee table was important to mom, I'll take her coffee table and donate my coffee table. So sometimes we have to think just a little differently. Yeah, and also, do you run into the case where, in the case of a hoarder, the client, let's say it's me, I don't know what's in that house because it's been a lot, my mom's lived there 50 years. So right. how do you deal in that situation? So we open up every box, every envelope, anything that's in there, and we gather them to the things that we would recommend. Okay. Not that it has to be done, but we'll say, you know, these things need to be disposed of because they've lived their life. You know, some of the seniors have those plastic vinyl tablecloths that's been on their table forever and you peel it up and everything sticks to the table. Right. That needs to go. Um, you know, tea stained doilies might need to go, the paper ones, just things that we know through our years of experience that you don't really need to hold on to unless there's a sentimental value that That's we're not made aware of. So we will sort it into this room is what we recommend for donation. This room is what we would suggest for auction. This is family items. But then trusting that we're going to dispose of those things that really need to be disposed of. How hard is it, though, to go through somebody's past? I mean, you're in a house that somebody's lived at 40, 50 years and, you know, they had passed away. Mm -hmm. I, I would think that'd be a little bit emotional when you come across these maybe old baby pictures and stuff like that. It can be very emotional for our team, but not as emotional as the family. So if the family's going through it, they're going to spend hours and hours having those memories. We're going to take the time to appreciate what they are, mm -hmm. but then we're going to move on from them. We've read love letters, we've read hate letters, we've read right. all sorts of things, but we're able to move through it because it's not our belongings. So we have that objectivity. And quite honestly, our biggest competition is the family, the do-it-yourselfer. But the hours that you will spend as a family member going through all those things might not be of value to you. You might want to consider hiring yeah. Golden Bridges. Is there a confidentiality agreement that, they, that you would sign? I mean, you said love letters, hate letters, yes. stuff along those lines. Yes. So we have a contract and it says that we will keep their information confidential as well as they would keep our information confidential unless we're given permission to work in the home to say, hey, we're working with Sally. Right. You know, if she says, oh yeah, tell all, your, tell all my friends you're working mm -hmm. with, it's no problem. But as far as what the content of those things are, no, that's kept in our things. And we are licensed, bonded and insured. So we have the protections needed, you know, for our company and we just keep those secrets to ourselves. So, in the case where the individual is still alive and is going to a nursing home or assisted living or something along those lines, do you provide consultative services helping them pick those places or whether what type of care that person should get? 
Do you provide those type of services? So we Because those are some of the hardest decisions. They are, and we have been known to take the individual to the different communities in town so that they can meet with them and see the space, have a meal, because that's really important yes. to a lot of our seniors. They need good nutrition. So we have done that. Most of the time when a client is calling us, they have made the decision to move and they've made the decision as to where they are going. Okay. Then we just honor that decision. Part of the, the toughest part of our job is sometimes getting them to understand that the space is different. And so the big f oversized couch that they currently have in their home is not going to <laughs> yeah. fit in the living room of their new one bedroom condo. It's right. just not. And that's a tough conversation that we have to have frequently because we just can't visualize how that's going to fit. So our team will go to the new home, they'll take measurements, they'll take measurements of the furniture, and then they'll work with the client to decide, yes, this will fit, but then you don't get any other chairs. Right. But how about these two chairs and maybe you can buy a new love seat, mm -hmm. something like that. So we um, give them direction, suggestions along the way, but again, ultimately, it is their decision, it is their belongings, and it is their home. Where do you draw the line in that consultative service aspect of it? Uh, I, I, do you recommend they go to a certain place, or you just provide the options? Do you get involved in the financial aspect of how much these oh, places cost? Great so questions. where do you draw that line where uh, we don't do that? We draw the line at finances. Okay. We don't wanna know your finances. We don't wanna know your, um, we wanna be aware of health conditions, such as if you have hearing issues, if you have oxygen, those types of things. But we don't need to know the nitty gritties of your medical mm -hmm. information. As far as where you're going, that's up to you. I mean, it really is, but we'll provide the options You'll and provide, let you know. Do you do the pricing for them also? We do not. Okay, so that's a negotiation between the family and the provider. Then. Right, you're the just kind of a liaison. Right, then. whether they're going to assistant, okay. assisted nursing, or independent, that's between them and their family and the community that they're moving into. So do you offer a service, let's say um, I have my mom and dad are coming from Florida to stay with us for Christmas, but I'm not sure my house is ready for someone like that or a couple like that. Do you come in and make sure, I hate to say the word safe, but my house can accommodate an Excellent. elderly group. Yes, we do. As a matter of fact, Susan Schultz has been certified in what we call NASM at home. And What's that's it called? NASM at home. Okay. NASM is short for our National Association of Senior oh, okay. Room Managers. Okay. And basically, she has gone through the certification process to assess a home to make sure that it is safe for seniors. So whether it's your family member coming to visit you and you're concerned about the stairs, the railing, grab bars, anything mm -hmm. like that, or if you're an individual that wants to stay in your home, we have a lot of seniors right. that want to stay in their home. We want to come in and assess it and make sure that it's safe. And then if it's not, give you recommendations as to how to make it safe. And if you need a handyman or someone to do those sort of things, we can make recommendations for that as well. The big problem I, I hear from my friends and is you have a parent that needs to get out of the house but don't want to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. Do you come in and help with that consultation to talk to the older person or you just is that not a service you provide you just let that go no we, say, do, we have the conversations because, okay but we want to hear what is holding the individual back okay why is it that they want to stay in the home you can't make them move i know it, that's the hard part make them move and i recently went through that with a, a mother daughter and the daughter really was worried about her mm -hmm. mom she'd been falling she wanted her to go into an assisted living community and they'd chosen the room and they've hired us and when it came right down to it, mom said, no, I am not moving. And we had to honor that and respect her decision yeah. because it is ultimately her life and her choice. Do so. you get, do you get, and another one I hear a lot about, do you get involved in the, you can't drive anymore situation? Absolutely not. You do not? Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. That's between the family. And quite honestly, your medical professional should be the one that makes I, that determination because you can go in, you know, if you're an adult child and you think your parents having issues, Go to the doctor's appointment okay. with them. Yeah. Go and hear what's being said or voice what you're noticing so that the provider gets a full picture. Because quite honestly, sometimes we might not tell our doctor everything, but you as the adult child might say, well, mom, remember last week when you hit the mailbox? Yeah. You know, those sort of things. But we it was snowy. Us, I just, yeah. I happened to slide. I mean, right. That, that's... Right. Um, okay. You mentioned $28,000 and that was on the high end, obviously. Oh, yeah. So... Um, I guess the question I'm asking is, is, is your service available 
to all people of all economic states or finance uh, sure. because because you know that's a lot of money it is a lot of money and i know that's at the high end but are you op- I- i'm assuming you want to hear from anybody and everybody we do but do you do you sometimes we cannot help those that have lesser financial needs but we do reach out to other um agencies within the community because sometimes the unmet needs um, from the united way might mm-hmm. be able to help with some dollars if at all possible, we'll have conversation about payments, you know, so that people can make payments for the mm-hmm. services, because ultimately we want to make sure that they're in the right environment. But as a business, sometimes we can't help everybody. Right. You are for profit. We are for profit, so sometimes we question that, but no, we are for profit. But the reality of it is most people that value service will value Golden Bridges. Those that don't want to spend their money because you know, they want to save it for whatever, right. they're not going to value what we do. But if you value your time and you know that it's worth hiring us so that you can take care of mom and dad in a different manner, we encourage the adult children to just be with mom and dad. Mm-hmm. Our time is limited. Whether we go first or they go first, our time is limited. So why not let us take on the work? Why not let us have the tough conversations with mom instead of you saying, mom, just get rid of it. Well, mom can't just get rid of it. She worked hard all of her life to do that. We had one client, we moved from Jacksonville over to Champaign. And, you know, we were trying to get her to understand the space and that she didn't have all this room. And she basically looked at us and said, you don't have to live there. And she was exactly right. Yes. We did not have to live there. Our goal is to make sure they're safe and they're surrounded by the things that they love. But again... She lives there, not us. How hard is it, and it, I'll, this is my last question, how hard is it for you to keep your emotions out of it? I think it would be very difficult to have that meeting and not go into your car afterwards and start crying. <laughs> there are times. I think that would be hard. There are times. It is. And thank goodness that we have a support team of the three partners right. that we can vent with and share the stories with. There are many tears, hugs, but there's also a lot of laughter. Right. Um for people to find out more about you, you do have a website. We do. What is the website? It's goldenbridgesforyou.com. And just to note, it's the number four, right. then you.com. So goldenbridgesforyou. Mm-hmm. And then there's our Facebook page. And we put a lot of tips out there okay. on Facebook about it. decluttering yourself. Start the process now. Don't wait till you have to move. Start now. And then, of course, our toll-free number just for that conversation, right. 888-922-6368. Thanks for coming in. This is interesting. I appreciate it. Thanks for it. having me. Have a great day. Uh, all right. That's Suzanne Ellerbrock from Golden Bridges. I'm Ron Kincher. Thanks for joining us for the Business Spotlight brought to you by TI Trust. TI Trust stands for True Integrity. One of our core values that we had for our staff was integrity. We want to be seen as, as a very integrity driven company. We've been doing trust services as an organization since the 1950s. It's all based on what's in the best interest of the clients. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's about serving that client and, and getting to a result that, that they need.